Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to do some batch card making. Now the cards I'm actually making are my March thank you cards for my tier 2 patrons on my Patreon page. But by the time you see this video they'll have had their cards um, so I thought I'd share the process on how to batch make. Now obviously this can be done for anything, it could be party invitations, it could be wedding invitations, it could even be Christmas cards. I am going to start off with A4 card stock, which is A4 UK, which is about 8 and an eighth by 11 and 3 quarters, so very similar to 8 and a half by 11, which is used in other countries. And I'm going to get two cards from each piece of A4 card. At this moment in time, I don't know how many I'm going to need because, as I say, I am pre-recording this well in advance. But I do know that currently at the moment I need at least 30 cards. So I'm just going to show you the process. I'm not going to show you every single card, but I'm going to show you the process that I would go through. Now, you can cut your paper in half any way you like. You can use a ruler and a, and a sharp knife. You can use a paper trimmer. You can use a guillotine. But this machine here is by Zutter. And I think it's called a, yeah, it's called a Dream Cuts. It's actually on the side. I've had this years. It's a manual cutter. But I have to say, it's the cutter that I always go back to for when I want to cut up quite a bit of card. If I'm only cutting one piece, I'll use my Fiskars paper trimmer. But for cutting several, I use this. It only has two operations. Like I say, it's really simple and it's manual, but it's very easy to use. It has two slots. This slot at the back will cut any size piece of paper or card you can fit in completely in half. End of, that's it. Just cuts it in half. Whatever size you put in, it'll cut it in half, you know, depending on the orientation you put it in. So either portrait, it will cut it in half long ways or landscape, it will cut it in half that way. That's the first slot and you can adjust the guides to accommodate the size you're putting in. This front section here only takes 12 by 12, nothing else, and it will automatically cut it into three. So... These, I think, were first originally brought out for scrapbookers, that kind of thing. So I'm going to use this back slot here at the moment. And I'm going to open the guides because I want to cut my A4 card in half on the long side so that I can then get to what we call A6 cards, which I think in the US and other parts of the world are A2. This card, I'm not sure whether you can see, has got a little bit of a texture on it. And you are only supposed to cut one piece at once. But, you know, sometimes I am a little bit of a rebel and I do cut, I try and cut a couple at a time. But basically you put your card in so it sits in and you lock it in with the guides. And then I just rest my fingers just on the top. Don't I don't push, I just rest. Just to keep it kind of level really. And then... You wind the handle and that's all you do. And as you wind, it's very simple. Your two pieces of card come out the other side and they're perfect. So I'm just going to work my way through my card. And then when I've cut all the pieces I'm going to cut so far, I will come back. Okay, so they're all done now, so don't know whether you can see, but they are all absolutely perfect and all the same size. So, I'm just going to put that to one side. Now, the next thing I would do is I would batch score all these in half. <clears throat> So I wouldn't make one card and then make another and make another. I would do everything in a batch. So this time I'm now going to score them in half. 
So to score them in half, I'm going to put them on the long side. Now, as I said before, this card has got a texture on it, which I'm not sure whether you can see on one side. So I'm going to put, that's the, the good side. I'm going to put that face down and I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! scoreboard. But there is a board available from Create and Craft. There will be a link in the description box directly under this video to my website and there's a... Um, an adhesive and tools page which I will link directly to and there's a board that's available from Create and Craft that's very similar to this that has one eighth increments so if you're using eight and a half by eleven you would just score this at four as I say ours is slightly different in the UK so I need to score at four and one eighth so literally that's all I would do I would score it put it on one side put the next one on and score that and just work my way through this pile of paper that's at my side putting the good side down and scoring on the inside so I'll carry on doing that and again I'll be back when I've done them all so my cards are all scored now um, this particular board comes with this kind of stylus for scoring but the adorable scoreboard that is on my website that I will link to I think comes with something like this a bone folder where you can score and fold and crease your cards so but the, with the one I'm using I've, I've got to use two separate tools so that's scored now and I've got my pile here so I would literally just fold this over now and then burnish it and I've got a perfect A6 or the equivalent of near enough an A2 card and again just work my way through this now I am obviously you know stopping and starting the filming but the cutting of this the scoring and now this folding and burnishing is probably only about five minutes to make um, I think I've got I started off with 12 sheets of A4, so 24 cards. Obviously, I, I know I have got to make more because, as I say, I think currently at the moment, I've got 30 people signed up to Tier 2 pay, <clears throat> Patreon. So by the time I get to the end of the month and I know how many patrons will need a card from me in March, I will just go through this same process get the amount of card I need cut it all score it all fold it and then I've got a stack of cards you know you could do this if you make this size of card predominantly and you don't pre-buy your cards you could do this anyway you know when you've got five minutes or nothing else to do just get a stack of cards, cut them in half, score them and then leave them flat, just put them in a drawer somewhere flat like this and then you've got a card ready to go when you need to make a quick card. So I'll just carry on working my way through and scoring them with a bone folder does give them a lovely nice crease. So I'll just keep on going and I'll come back when I've done all these and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so they're all finished now, all folded and I found a little box just to keep them all in because they were sliding all over my desk. So the idea for this card is that I'm thinking I'm going to use it this way as like a tent shape card. So I'm going to measure the area that I've got to work with, which should be you know there are thereabouts four by about five five and a quarter something like that but as I say our paper is slightly different in size in the UK so I've got about five and three quarters by four and an eighth so I'm going to call it four by five and a half just to make it easier Okay, so I'm going to explain how I'm going to put the cards together now. I'm just going to use the word 
thanks, but I'm going to cut them all in different colours of card. <clears throat> some are going to be stuck down flat, some, some are going to be 3D'd up. And this is how I'm going to try and work out how to do it. So I'm going to come into patterns, into basic shapes and grab a rectangle. I'm going to make this, this rectangle is just going to be a guide just for now. I'm going to unlock the proportions and I'm going to make it five inches wide and 3.75 inches high. Because this card, as I said, is more or less four by five and a half. So I, I don't want to use the whole width. I want some space around it. So I'm going to say set and put that on my page. And that's just a visual guide. I don't know whether you can see it. It's just a visual guide for me to then place my text, which I'm going to cut in coloured card. So I'm going to come back to add come to the text and I'm going to choose a font. I'm going to try this first one and I want to do it all in lowercase. So I'm going to click on the purple icon, icon on the left here to change the letters to lowercase and I'm going to type in thanks and say OK. I'm not going to do anything here at the moment, I'm just going to say set. And I can see now straight away that that thanks is too big in width for this box. So with the words selected, I'm going to come into the top left icon, the one that's the map with the square, the triangle and the circle. And then I'm going to come into the icon here that's got a square with arrows going up and down and horizontal. And I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio proportions, which is the third icon along. And I'm going to make the height bigger, but take the width down. Because at the moment it's saying that this word is measuring just about six and a quarter inches wide by a one, and an in one and a quarter inches high. So I can afford to make it taller, but I want to make them narrower because I obviously want them to fit on the front of this card. And obviously what I'm going to do, or what my idea is that I'm going to stick some of the letters flat and then 3D some of the other ones up and kind of overlap them. And they're all going to be cut in different colors of card, which I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. So this is all the process of batch card making. So I'm going to take this down I'm going to take it to about four and a quarter, I think. Yeah, so my words now are four and a quarter inches wide by about 1.66 inches high, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to say OK. So they're my words. I can select this box now and hit the trash can and delete it because it was only a visual aid for me to work out how the letters are going to sit on the front of my card. So I can put my card back in my box now. <clears throat> so now I'm going to bring the thanks up here. I'm going to come back into the editing icon and I'm going to say 12. And say OK. And they've all come on like that. I'm going to go back. I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to say OK. Go into this icon here, which is the arrange icon and get them to all fit on as best they'll fit. As these are all going to be cut, each one of these words is going to be cut in a colour of card, but then I'm going to jumble them all up when I stick them down. So for now, I think I'll just say OK. And then because I'm going to want to have to make more cards, I'm going to save this so I'll, in case I forget what size I've made them all at. But first of all, I'm just going to say, OK, um, first of all, I'm just going to separate them ever so slightly. 
because it might make it a bit easier. So I'm going to save them and I'm going to put them in the machine and then I know where they are and then I can come back to them and make the extra ones I need and they'll all be the same size. So it's told me it's saved it and I'm going to say OK. So what I'm going to do now, <clears throat> I'm going to get my scan and cut mat and I'm going to load it up with pieces of card. So the next process of the operation is to get all my scraps of card and pull out of here anything that's at least five inches wide by two inches high. Obviously some of them have got a bit of texture on, some of them are smooth. But I'm going to try and pull out card that's all of a similar weight. So I probably wouldn't use mirror card, you know, with a plain card. I'm not sure. It depends if I think the thickness is okay. I may or may not, I may pull a piece out just to try it. I'm just going to go through my stash and pull out all the bits of card for now that I think will work. And I'm just going to start laying them out on this mat. And I'm going to try and get as many pieces as I can. On this mat. Now this piece is too long. Let's see if I can get <clears throat> another piece on there. So now just going to burnish all these down <clears throat> and because I know I need quite a lot of letters if I've got a piece like this that's quite wide that I can get two lots of thanks on then I'll do that so that's my mat as it is at the moment loaded up and I've still got you know, some pieces here and I've got a stack still in my drawer. So now I'm going to bring this in, bring you round. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to use the background scan icon, which is the blue uh, scanner with the bar across. And I'm going to say OK. And this is the favourite feature of the scan and cut for me, that being able to do this background scan so you can position anything you want where you want it on a piece of card or paper or fabric. I don't know how well you're going to see, as I say, it's, um, it's another rainy, snowy day here. So now, basically, I'm just going to go through and drag the words and see if I can get them all on to these pieces of card. As I say, I may have to delete some because, you know, I've got I've got too many, but it doesn't matter because I've saved the file so I know what size I'm working with. Might have to delete that one. And then I'm going to zoom in and see if I've got them where I'm trying to position to on a piece of card. Make sure that I've got enough room to position them so that they cut, you know, without interfering with each other. So I'm just going to set my blade and cut them and see how I go. I 
Okay, so they're all cut now. I'm just lifting up the pink one just to see if it's cut through and the green one. Because as I say, these I think are the um, thicker card. And they all appear to have cut through. So I'm going to unload the mat. I'm going to say OK and unload the mat and just push the machine out of the way for now. And then I'm just going to start releasing all the bits <clears throat> of card and leave the letters behind. I mean, you could even use this as a stencil, you know, if you wanted to. But basically, I've just restuck this mat, so it's, it's, it's actually quite sticky. So I'm just taking my time and I'm just going to peel them all off. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Right, so I've got all the waste taken away from them. And what I'm going to do now, I've got myself some little plastic cartons. I need six because there's six letters um, and I've only got five, so I've got a plastic cup. So I'm basically going to peel off each letter and put it in one of these trays. So I'm going to end up with like a tray full of T's, a tray full of H, or, and work my way through this mat. When I've done that, I'll show you how I'm going to assemble the card. I've got my little trays with each letter in, so I've got my T-H-A-N-K and my S. And then I'm going to clean this mat off, and I'm just going to repeat exactly what I've just shown you. So I'm going to cut some more, fill up my tubs, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to assemble the card. I've got all my little pots with my letters in now. Obviously, if you've got a 12 by 24 mat, you can cut more at once. I have got a bigger mat, but I wanted to use a regular standard 12 by 12 mat because, you know, I, I'm mindful that not everybody has the bigger mat. So, you know, I'll cut some more when I get some more time. But this is the process that I would go through when I'm batch card making. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my card. And as I said, my idea is that I want to put the word thanks across the front. I want three of the letters stuck down flat and three of the letters I'm going to raise up with 3D foam. So I'm using a wet glue to stick the ones down that are going to go down flat. And this is a stamping up, but any wet glue, any PVA glue that dries clear is perfectly fine. And I've got some 3D foam pads. Now these might be... A little bit too big so I might have to cut them so what I'll probably do is cut a row in half at a time and then I can pick them up with my piercing tool and place them on the letters so I'm just gonna just try one out for now and let's see how it's looking I don't know whether to, I want to stamp something on the background yet I'm not sure so I'm thinking that the first letter will be raised up so the H will be flat which will then mean that the A will be raised up so the N will be flat um, T H A N and the S will be flat so let's just grab an S and I'm just grabbing them, you know, and mixing up the colours. Then what I would do is get my letters and I want to pop this one up, but I'll probably overlay it slightly. But I'm just going to lay them out for now, just to see how they fit on this card. So something like that. But I don't know, as I say, whether I want to just leave it simple like that or whether I want to stamp some kind of a, a background on it. So I've got some ink and I've got a kind of nondescript speckly stamp which I've had for years and if you follow my channel you'll see that I've used this loads of times it's called Field of Sky and it's by a stamp in the hand and I've had it years so I don't know whether it's still made or not 
So I'm thinking I'll move those letters off for now and I'm just going to try this. and see how this looks. I'm just going to do the one and then once I know if it's going to look okay, what I would then do is go through all the cards doing all this stamping and then I'd go back through the letters, I'd stick all the flat ones on first and go back and put the 3D ones on afterwards. So for now we'll just, I'll just do the one and see. I've got a silicone mat here, I'm going to put some glue <clears throat> So these are the ones that are going on flat. Once you get going with your, you know, your batch processing, it, it, it will speed up. This, this looks fiddly and I know it looks as though it's probably going to take quite a bit of time. But I think, you know, it'll be worth it. And my patrons are worth it. So hopefully they'll like them. So T-H-A-N. K needs to go down. Um, I might not stick to doing, you know, three flat and three raised. I'll just see how I... So that needs to be raised, that's flat, that's raised, that's flat. That one should be raised, I've put glue on that and it shouldn't be. So, you know, anyway, we'll, we'll plod on and see how we go. I'm just going to turn this over and give it a burnish in the hope that the glue will start to stick and then I'm going to turn these over and put foam pads on them. As I say I'm going to cut them in half so I'm just going to go down a row at a time and then hopefully they will be easier for me to pick off. So let's try this and see how we go. So I'm just going to peel the backing off these and see how it's looking. And I'm not going to do them all straight, I'm going to do some, you know, a bit higgledy piggledy and So that's how it's looking. And then I'll probably put an insert in. What do you think? They're quite simple, but nice. But you know, if you've got a lot to make, easy enough to be able to do, use up, you know, all your scraps of card from the scan and cut, just give it a burnish down. <clears throat> use up all your scraps of card from, you know, that you've got, that you've collected. And it's a nice way to make a personalized card. So, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. Make sure you've got the bell notification icon turned on and that way you'll hopefully get notifications from YouTube. And if you do like my channel and you do want to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the box directly under, under this video in the show more. Or if you're on a mobile, I think there's a little downward facing arrow under the video. Click on that and it'll open up the box and you'll find the description of this video and the links to my website if you want to buy, you know, any of the adhesives or the scoreboard, anything like that, and also the Patreon link. So hopefully you like that project and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.